Hello again, uh, everybody. I'm very happy that you are here with us in Sofia in this sunny day. In fact, it is not sunny, but uh, <laughs> uh, virtually it is sunny. So <laughs> hello from sunny Sofia. Uh, uh, we are very happy to be with you. Uh, and um, I will not lose the time because I, I wanted to present uh, our first uh, guest, um, when I think about uh, data and analysis of culture, this is the first uh, name that um, comes in my mind always. Um, Diana Andreeva uh, is a very um, close friend to our department, always in help when we need. Uh, she's director of the observatory of cultural economics and uh, professor in two university in Sofia, the big one of the biggest universities in Bulgaria, the University of National and World Economy with more than 10,000 students, and uh, the Academy of uh, Theatre and Cinema of Sofia. Uh, the mission of the observatory uh, is uh, to observe and, and analyze uh, what happens in the cultural sector uh, and uh, the economical aspects of the events and processes in, uh, in culture and arts in Bulgaria. And of course, to disseminate this information uh, to be uh, in um, help in news uh, for the cultural sector, not only in Bulgaria, but uh, also abroad. Uh, and uh, this organization, uh, we may say, has uh, three main goals to further develop the theory of uh, economic analysis in the area of arts and culture, to encourage cultural practitioners and decision makers to make uh, um, decisions uh, which laid on upon uh, theory and upon analysis, and to support the cultural organizers uh, get successfully involved uh, in formulating uh, uh, policies and adapting strategies in the field of culture. Today, she will talk about uh, uh, tendencies uh, in the cultural economics, in the creative economics of the city, about uh, Sofia as a um, uh, creative city of film, as we said uh, tomorrow, and about some uh, ideas which are in the process of realization. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, very much to Diana and uh, give her the floor. Thank uh, you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, and uh, I would like to welcome you in Sofia. Uh, unfortunately, it's not sunny, almost snowy. So um, today I'm going to present um, um, the presentation about the economical impact of uh, arts, culture and creative industries, cultural tourism and cultural heritage in Sofia. And also uh, two other parts of my presentations. Uh, presentation is about uh, the new, completely new project funded by Horizon 2020 uh, that we are participating in about the global production network. It's a completely new model uh, for the European Commission uh, as well. And we are going to, at the end of the project uh, to build uh, European Observatory of Cultural Economics based on the GPN approach in the cultural field. And the third uh, part of my presentation, uh, it will be about the uh, um, Creative City of Film and the action plan we are working on for the 2021-2022 because Sofia is part of the <clears throat> Creative uh, Cities Network by UNESCO, and it's an important to have an action plan for uh, film industry, which is, uh, you could see from the data uh, in a minute, 100% based in Sofia. So I will share my screen.
Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, the research that we have for uh, like 11 years is called Sofia City of Creative Economy. Uh, because, uh, as I said, uh, the film industry uh, is 100% uh, concentrated in Sofia, but also 80% of the cultural activities are concentrated in the uh, in Sofia. Um, so the economical impact is uh, in important uh, uh, to see and to base the cultural policies. Uh, and the programs of the Sofia uh, municipalities. Uh, we started with, uh, uh, with this uh, cartography of arts, culture, creative industries, culture, heritage and cultural tourism 11 years ago, uh, just to see not only the cultural aspects when we are building cultural policies, as I said, but uh, we wanted to see um, the economical uh, impact of uh, the sector. We based our research on the structural business uh, statistic by the National Statistical Institute and also data from Eurostat. Most of the data that we have is unpublished. So uh, we have a privilege to see behind the data, which is uh, publicly known uh, for, the, for the community. Uh, we have um, uh, some data that we, uh, we have to manage and to analyze it about the economical <clears throat> um, impact, as I said. <clears throat> we are observing uh, the added value uh, of factor expenditures, uh, foreign direct investments, which are uh, very important for the countries from the Central and Eastern Europe, because the transformation started 30 years ago is not finished. So um, for some cultural and creative industries, especially, it's an important indicator, the level of foreign direct uh, investments also employment, which is the social indicator. And I think the most important when we are talking about the cultural sector, enterprises and organizations uh, in the cultural field. So as I said, uh, we based uh, our research on the data of uh, uh, Eurostat. And it's important to say that we base the methodology, not uh, a well-known uh, methodology of WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, which uh, treated the sector as only um, creative industries. Uh, we based our research on the methodology of Germany, uh, Austria, and Switzerland, uh, where uh, we have uh, four domains, arts, the core part of the sector, cultural industries, creative industries, and something which is very special for Bulgaria because we have a huge uh, amount of uh, cultural heritage monuments. We added also uh, cultural tourism, which is very important, as I said, for the country and especially for um, Sofia. Um, the methodology uh, we can say and the research based uh, on the data of uh, Eurostat and the structural business um, uh, statistics shows uh, uh, within these 11 years, the level of development of the market for culture and creative uh, industries uh, in Sofia and, and uh, in Bulgaria. And uh, you will see, uh, I'm always make a comparison between Sofia and Bulgaria, uh, because uh, the data for Bulgaria is uh, twice less than the data and the result in um, uh, Sofia. Uh, so, um, I will directly go to the scope of the uh, research that we have. As I mentioned, we have four domains in the research, arts and cultural heritage, visual arts, performing arts, cultural heritage. These are the three domains that needs uh, mostly public support and they cannot survive uh, um, um, just uh, on a market uh, principle. 
because they have a huge frame of uh, um, their quasi market, uh, first of all, and they have a huge frame of uh, market and non market failures. The second domain is cultural industries. Uh, we can say that this is the driver of economical um, impact and added value, uh, especially music industry, film industry, book, book publishing, radio, TV, and new media. Uh, publishing uh, media, software and video games. <clears throat> the third domain, which is mostly market uh, domain and uh, there is no public uh, subsidies in this uh, sector almost, design, architecture, advertising. And the fourth domain, as I said, this is a specific uh, for the needs of uh, Bulgarian cultural policy, cultural tourism. Uh, the first indicator that I would like to show you is the added value by factor expenditures. <clears throat> we have uh, 11 years uh, data to make a comparison. And what is uh, necessary to say that uh, uh, in the years uh, 2009, 2011, it was the time of the former now, economical and financial crisis, when we have a little decrease of the added value in the uh, sector. The data is uh, uh, on a national level. This slide, this slide is on a national level. We can say that according to the data, 5.26% of GDP, uh, the added value of the sector, um, uh, put uh, Bulgaria in the first 10 countries in European, uh, European Union, according to the added value, even though we have an economical problems uh, within the country, we have a slow economical um, growth, uh, we can say, but the sector itself, without a policy on a national level, usually, uh, we have uh, uh, strong policies on a local level, like the cultural um, strategies and policies in the Sofia municipalities, in Sofia municipality, but on a national level, without the policy even, we have a very high added value growth, you can see uh, within these 11 um, years. Uh, or just uh, from the 36 uh, economic sectors, which we are uh, observing in the economic activities and the Bulgarian economy. The sector has uh, eight place uh, in terms of uh, added value for this uh, period 2008-2018. Um, for the uh, comparison with the state budget on a national level, it's very interesting to see the huge differences between the um, public uh, finance uh, support for the sector, which is 0 0.5 from the 2009 uh, to 2021st. Uh, uh, and we have uh, um, uh, added value, which is uh, nine times uh, bigger than the public uh, subsidies that we are receiving. Uh, the second uh, uh, slide is about the added value, um, which uh, we are observing uh, by statistical planning areas. Maybe you know that uh, Bulgaria is divided on six regions, uh, and we are observing where the added value is concentrated. And uh, you could see, for instance, uh, the comparison between the Northwest planning area, which is the poorest, and non-developed uh, uh, region in European Union, not only Bulgaria, 0.8 of the added value of the sector is in this region. And you can see the comparison with the Southwest planning area, where is uh, Sofia exactly, 86%. Uh, when you um, uh, observe just uh, Sofia, you can see 83%. So that's why we are calling the research uh, Sofia Center of uh, Creative uh, Economy and Center of uh, Culture and Creative uh, Industry. Uh, by the way, we have in Bulgarian constitution a special article about the balanced development of the region. But uh, like 30 years already, uh, none of the governments uh, decided the problem uh, of this unbalanced 
statistical planning and regional development. This is one of the biggest problem on a national level we could see. Now we are uh, moving to uh, the added value in Sofia, and you can see uh, easily that the added value and the concentration of the activities, cultural activities in the added value in Sofia doubled the uh, data for Sofia. And uh, for the, the whole period, we can say that the, the business climate in Sofia is uh, better developed uh, than on the national level. And uh, again, if we're looking to 2009, 2011, the crisis, uh, the economical and financial crisis, we can see um, uh, just a little uh, economical um, result uh, in comparison to the national uh, level. I'm from the 36 economic uh, sectors uh, in uh, Sofia and economy of Sofia, uh, our sector uh, takes uh, third place in terms of uh, added value for the period 2008-2011. Uh, in, in the added value in uh, 1000 Bulgarian uh, LEF uh, shows uh, also um, amazing results, we could say, uh, again, in comparison to the public finance that we have, uh, or uh, we can say that uh, uh, on a national level, we have more than 3 billions uh, and 300 millions uh, added value. In Sofia is the biggest part, uh, as you can see, like two billions and uh, up 600 millions. Uh, the added value is concentrated in uh, Sofia for uh, this period. And we can say also uh, for uh, almost 11 years, the added value on a national level and uh, on uh, the level of Sofia doubled the value. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, also an amazing result according to the national policy, as I mentioned uh, before. Which are the sectors from the arts, culture and creative industries, cultural heritage and cultural tourism with the highest growth for these 11 uh, years? The first sector with almost 500% growth in this period is the radio, TV and new me media. And here especially we can um, uh, focus on new media and the TV, of course. Uh, the second sector is the one of the main driving force, not only in the sector, but in the economy. Uh, this is also an European tendency and a global tendency, uh, software and video games with uh, almost uh, 383% uh, growth. And the film industry, uh, which uh, is uh, the national local phenomena, I could say, uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, 100% um, of the film industry is um, concentrated in uh, Sofia. Uh, I mentioned before that the um, employment as a social factor is uh, the most important indicator because uh, we are observing uh, and we are trying to focus a problem that is not valid only for Bulgaria, Sofia, but also for the European Union. Most of the people engaged in the cultural um, sector as an employee are young and uh, high educated uh, persons. So uh, what we can uh, say about this observation of the employment is that uh, we have uh, almost um, um, intensive growth in these uh, uh, 11 years, according to the economical uh, activities, the rest of the economical activities, uh, we have, uh, especially in these uh, years, uh, 2009, 2014, uh, decrease in the employment, uh, the indicator uh, on a national level for the whole economic activities. But for the our sector, we have um, on a national level uh, growth. And uh, also we can say this uh, for Sofia, 
Uh, you can see that the data is uh, um, also um, doubled than the national level. And in 2018, uh, more than 8% of the employment in the, the area of Sofia is uh, from the arts, culture and creative industries, cultural heritage and cultural uh, tourism. Uh, what we can say behind the percent, how many are exactly on a national level. Uh, this was a very important indicator during, during the COVID crisis in uh, Bulgaria, because uh, when the COVID uh, crisis started, our Ministry of Culture started to count uh, the employee in the cultural sector to make a special program. Uh, they're working for time to time without uh, precise data that we are producing for the cultural policies and cultural programs in Sofia. So we can say that more than 108,000 uh, people are engaged and uh, um, employed in uh, the cultural sector in Bulgaria. Uh, you can see the growth uh, in the period 2008-2018. Um, also, I could, uh, sorry, this is the um, added value. Uh, also for Sofia, uh, we can say that uh, uh, most of the employment and the employee is uh, in uh, Sofia. Um, also, we can uh, make an analysis that uh, most of the cultural industries and um, uh, creative industries are based in uh, Sofia, but uh, the arts and cultural heritage is uh, decentralized and deconcentrated de uh, um, out of Sofia. So that's why we have in this uh, particular indicator uh, less than 100% of course concentration in um, uh, Sofia. The foreign direct investments uh, that I mentioned is an important indicator, gives us uh, uh, a specific uh, knowledge about uh, the interest of the foreign uh, investors in uh, Bulgaria. We have a special legislation encourage foreign direct investments in Bulgaria. We have also a specific tax uh, uh, privilege regimes for the investors. And uh, for us is also, as I mentioned, important to know this indicator because uh, from time to time within the Bulgarian legislation, we are using this indicator to make an analysis uh, if we need to make uh, financial incentives or uh, specific tax regimes uh, for uh, foreign investors uh, uh, like to invest in uh, Bulgarian culture. And in particular, uh, this year and the last year, it was a huge conversation and um, I could say um, very uh, sharp uh, discussion in Bulgarian uh, uh, film industry about the new legislation, make a privilege uh, regime uh, to a foreign uh, American company based in uh, Sofia. Uh, so we are using, as I mentioned, uh, this indicator, uh, in particular, uh, tax and financial um, and fiscal incentives uh, regimes. Uh, what we can see from the uh, foreign direct investment uh, uh, in Sofia is that uh, from, from uh, year to year, uh, between 80 and 99% uh, of the uh, foreign direct uh, investments are based in Sofia. Uh, I mentioned already uh, because of the business climate, uh, we have a so-called natural audiovisual cluster, uh, for example, and uh, of course the security for the foreign investments uh, are uh, with the biggest important in uh, Sofia. Uh, the next indicator is about the enterprises or the organization. What we can see is the uh, the biggest uh, the biggest growth is in 2018. More than 21,000 uh, uh, enterprises uh, are uh, in Bulgarian economy. 
what we can uh, say about the growth of the enterprises um, indicator in this uh, particular field is uh, that the highest growth of the enterprises uh, is from the culture, cultural industries and creative uh, industries, not uh, uh, within the arts uh, and uh, cultural heritage domain and not uh, within the cultural tourism, only in cultural um, industries and creative industries. Also for Sofia, what we can uh, see is that the uh, more than a half of the enterprises are based in uh, Sofia, or we can uh, conclude that the, every 10th uh, enterprise uh, in Sofia is from the sector of arts, culture and creative industries, cultural heritage and cultural tourism uh, in the economy of uh, Sofia. The turnover, which is also an important indicator that we are following uh, within the years, uh, is showing also um, growth uh, uh, between 2008 and 2018 for the 11 years. And we have up to 2 billion growth uh, for this uh, 11 particular um, years. Also for, uh, for the economy of Sofia, we can uh, conclude and for the turnover um, of the arts and culture and creative industries, cultural heritage and cultural tourism is that 80%, more than 80% is of the turnover is concentrated uh, in Sofia. So this is a indicator for the economical activity of the enterprises on the uh, national and the level of uh, Sofia. Uh, something that is very interesting uh, also for us to observe is the average gross annual salaries uh, within the sector. And in the first column, you can see uh, the average gross annual salary for the whole economy of uh, Bulgaria. This is the average aggregate uh, data. Uh, for the economical activities in the second column is our uh, particular sector. And in the uh, third column, uh, we are observing the film industry because as I mentioned, uh, uh, Sofia is a creative city of film by the network of uh, UNESCO. Uh, what we can see uh, from this uh, table basically is that, that uh, uh, the average gross annual salary is first uh, higher in our sector than the average uh, um, gross annual salaries in the Bulgarian economy. Uh, we have a triple growth uh, for the uh, period of 2008-2018, and also we can conclude this uh, with uh, almost two times and a half uh, growth for the film um, industry. Also in Sofia, uh, you can see a little higher data for the average gr gross annual salaries, because I, I, as I already mentioned, uh, here we have a um, the highest uh, business climate uh, and economical uh, development. Basically, almost 50% of Bulgarian GDP is based in uh, Sofia. That's why the data that you can see uh, presented the higher average gross annual salary on the territory of uh, Sofia municipality. Um, which are the uh, highest uh, average gross annual salaries uh, in particular sectors. The first uh, sector is software and video games with more than 50,000 um, leva or 25,000 euro um, average gross annual salary. Radio, TV and new media on the second place advertising uh, market as a creative industry and the film industry on the fourth uh, place. Uh, for uh, the data for Sofia, uh, according to the average gross annual salaries is uh, the same. Again, you can see a little higher uh, average gross annual um, salaries based in uh, Sofia. 
uh, I would like to present uh, also a particular date about the film industry, uh, according to our title, uh, Creative uh, City of Film. Uh, and uh, what we can uh, uh, see, uh, especially from the number of enterprises, as I mentioned, 100% uh, is uh, of the film industry is based in uh, Sofia. So uh, from time to time, you can see if the uh, economical sector uh, has uh, um, growth and uh, high development. Uh, just uh, observing the indicator of uh, number of enterprises, if we have a growth or, or if we have, uh, uh, if we uh, observing a decrease uh, in the number of enterprises. So what we can see uh, basically here is uh, that we doubled the enterprises. Uh, within these 11 uh, years, and especially uh, we can say that we uh, doubled uh, the enterprises in the technical market, the sub-market of the uh, Bulgarian film industry. The added value of uh, Bulgarian film industry also is uh, an important uh, indicator. As I mentioned, uh, we reorganized uh, our Bulgarian uh, national legislation in uh, film industry. And it, it was an important indicator, uh, just the added value to present what's going on with the public finance when the state support film industry. Do we have only cultural uh, value that we are observing, or we are observing also added value for the economy based on the public subsidy, which is um, the main uh, financial source in uh, the Bulgarian film industry. And with this observation and our research, we proved that uh, uh, Bulgarian film industry has an added value, which is uh, eight times uh, higher uh, than the public, uh, the level of public uh, subsidy. So we uh, succeeded to prove that we need, as a film industry sector, more public investments to double even the added value within the next uh, 10 years. Direct foreign investments, as I mentioned, is an important indicator because we are observing if it's necessary to uh, change the legislation as we did this year uh, about the fiscal incentives uh, uh, for the basically American uh, movies on the territory of uh, Sofia, basically. Uh, so the level of um, foreign investments, uh, you can see uh, also we, for these 11 particular uh, years, we almost doubled the result of, uh, for, the, uh, for this indicator. The employment is also, uh, as I mentioned, uh, an important, maybe most important social factor. Also, uh, for this period, uh, it's important to say that we don't have only registered enterprises, but we have a, a huge growth of uh, people who are employed in these uh, production companies or technical companies uh, services. Um, the turnover is also, as I mentioned, an uh, important uh, indicators. You can see the data from 2008, almost triple the result for this uh, period. And uh, the last uh, uh, slide of uh, this uh, first part of the presentation is based on the cash expenditures of the households. Uh, because we are observing also not only economic value uh, from the um, cultural and creative industries, arts, cultural heritage, uh, and cultural tourism as an enterprises and uh, as an employee, but also the participation of the uh, people in the cultural activities, which is also a very important indicator for especially Bulgaria. Easily you can see from the first column, the national level, and from the second column uh, based uh, on the data for Sofia, <clears throat> that we have a cash expenditure of households, for instance, in Sofia at uh, 2018, we almost doubled the result on the national level. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, this is because of the higher average salaries that we have uh, 
in uh, Sofia, but also for um, uh, need to um, uh, to participate in culture because we have uh, other research. Uh, just uh, we are observing um, with. Uh, the percentage of uh, um, growth of the average salaries and percentage of uh, cash expenditures of uh, households as a growth and you can uh, we can see in this uh, <clears throat> comparison that the cash expenditures of households uh, um, are bigger than the a percentage of uh, growth of the average uh, salaries so this is uh, one of the um, one of the most fantastic i could say uh, indicator that we are observing and in particular uh, cash expenditures of uh, households. The second part of my presentation is about the project that I mentioned, funded by Horizon 2020. Uh, the, uh, the project is uh, uh, with the, the participation of uh, nine countries. Uh, our uh, country uh, is presented uh, by our organization and <clears throat> we are, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> Uh, our task is uh, to have uh, a completely new approach about the audiovisual sector, <coughs> which is um, uh, <clears throat> based on three domains, film industry, TV, radio and video games. Uh, so to, to make a completely new approach, as I said, uh, using GPN approach, Global Production Network, and the five uh, stages of the Global Production Network. This is, as I said, a completely new project, uh, and I could say pioneer research under Horizon 2020, uh, because uh, the GPN approach uh, uh, until the moment is... Uh, um, just uh, based on the <clears throat> traditional economical activities, but never in culture and creative uh, sector. So we are uh, using for this uh, approach, as I mentioned, the audiovisual sector, which is uh, our particular uh, goal based on the uh, UNESCO framework uh, of uh, cultural statistic, also uh, Eurostat uh, data that we are uh, collecting for the countries during the COVID crisis. Uh, we postponed for a year with our project <clears throat> because the European Commission forced us to make a research about the COVID measures uh, uh, for the European countries and to provide data, economical data for the uh, different countries in European Union. Uh, so we are, as I uh, said, we are trying to um, see uh, which part of the global production network uh, and the public finance uh, finances and European finance uh, of, of financing uh, is uh, particularly in Europe and where we can uh, export the value under the global production network out of the European uh, Union. So these are the stages that we are observing. Uh, just to have an impression, uh, we choose a case study about the Bulgarian, one of the biggest Bulgarian uh, production uh, company, and uh, we are dividing her activity of the uh, Rusica Volkanova company, Classfilm is the name of the production company, on five particular stages, creation, distribution, production, exchange, and archiving. This new approach uh, should reflect to the European cultural policies within three or four years, because on uh, <clears throat> Based on this uh, uh, global production network approach, we are building on a European level observatory of cultural economics with the particular uh, task to observe the global production networks uh, within the culture and creative uh, sector uh, in the European uh, Union countries. Uh, so in uh, this uh, typology that we use to see where uh, the power distribution in the production network is based, uh, we can see uh, that the public finance, for instance, uh, from Bulgaria, uh, is uh, they're moving to 
EU and global level through the phases of global production network. This is an important approach to see where the public money goes the, just in European Union, or we are exporting, as I said, value uh, out of the European Union. So uh, this is, uh, I just mentioned the uh, most of the GPN approach um, introduction, I could say, uh, about the audio audiovisual sector. Uh, that's why I'm moving to uh, the third and the last part of my presentation, uh, which is about the Sofia Creative City of Fume. And uh, in particular, uh, we are forced as a, a creative city of film to have a strategy for a film industry. Basically, we don't have on national level the film industry strategy, but we have on a municipal level. So Sofia municipal, municipality was the first municipality. And uh, as I said, uh, we don't have on national level. Uh, just to have uh, a cultural um, film industry strategy. <clears throat> we have uh, <clears throat> task to include the um, global sustainable development goals uh, within our strategy and also in our annual plan for 2021 and 2022 for the implementation of the strategy <clears throat> Sofia creative city of film <clears throat> sorry i will present uh, one part of the action plan and the strategy uh, which is i think most important uh, within the title Sofia creative city and this is about the audience uh, development uh, and expansion of Sofia citizens access to film uh, industry. Uh, we have uh, <clears throat> now several um, ideas and tasks uh, to be developed within the, these two years. The first one is uh, to, uh, to have and to build the uh, so-called student or universities uh, cinema clubs uh, because Bulgaria uh, in uh, Sofia, I'm sorry, in Sofia we have 24 universities uh, with uh, more than 70,000 students uh, within these uh, universities. And we think that is important to uh, be connected uh, to film industry. Biliana presented me as a lecturer in the University of National and World Economy. This is the Economical University in uh, uh, Bulgaria. And I could see from inside that uh, the students are not interested in cultural activities in particular. So if they are not interested to go out of the universities, we are going to have the cultural activity and in particular film, film industry club, cinema club in the university. So this is one of the, uh, our tasks to make the cinema clubs creative city of uh, film uh, within the universities. On the second level to, uh, to integrate students from the uh, primary and high school uh, education uh, with the special discipline uh, within the uh, primary and uh, high school education, film industry, <clears throat> and with the cinema clubs uh, again. Also, um, we have uh, an idea uh, how to expand the places for uh, cinema screening in uh, Sofia. Uh, within the central part of uh, Sofia, so we have also um, uh, many villages within the Sofia municipalities without the uh, access to cinema and uh, in particular to Bulgarian uh, uh, film industry. So uh, we have a special focus on peripheral areas of uh, Sofia uh, in the case of uh, access to cinema. Um, one of the idea also is to, uh, to make restoration of the cinema lectures for students from the universities and from schools in Bulgarian film archive cinema called Odeon. Uh, we had uh, like before 
1989 uh, uh, special lectures about the film industry in uh, Bulgaria, the history of uh, cinema as well. So our uh, willing is to, uh, to make a restoration of these cinema lectures. And of course, uh, the biggest uh, task for us is uh, to make a creation of uh, municipal cinema, creative uh, city of film. And thank you very much for uh, your attention. If you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Diana. That was just outstanding. Um, Guys, this is one of the reasons why we have data as a core area of the access program, a reminder of how bringing facts, whether qualitative or quantitative together can be hugely impactful. Um, yeah, I can see lots of applause coming up around the chat and um, Biliana, hold on tight to Diana because I'm imagining she's going to get lots of job offers coming in from the other seven cities around for creating such an incredible array of data that shows so clearly the economic value that links to the human value and the social value of the film industries. I was really struck by the way that your presentation worked the way through all of these from looking at the value to the economy, to the employment, to giving people opportunities to watch film. Um, and I think that's rare and really special. We've got a few questions coming in in the chat, but could I ask a few practical questions, Diana, first of all, based on some of the thinking that we've been doing and just to give people a bit more insight into how you've got these incredible statistics. Um, you had some slides about employment and turnover in film industry, arts and creative businesses. How did you get those? Do you have to go directly to the businesses or is there another municipal or national reporting mechanism? How did you actually get all this information? Um, we have um, uh, strong relationships with the National Statistical Institute. Uh, so the data is based on the structural business statistic uh, from the National Statistical Institute. The statistical data is unpublished, so we need to see the unpublished data and to make a precise analysis about the uh, employment, as you mentioned, uh, added value, turnover. Um, also, we have... Um, alternative sources because, uh, for instance, this is not valid only uh, for Bulgaria, uh, but within the European Union. We don't have a statistics about the festivals. One of the highest, uh, uh, one of the sector uh, in the culture and creative uh, industries or uh, creative uh, businesses with the highest growth in European Union. So we are using alternative sources to combine uh, the added value employment from festivals. And on the project that I mentioned, Ciceron, <laughs> within the European Commission, we have a special conversation and relations with the Eurostat. Uh, because we are in, uh, we insist uh, as uh, people from the project, uh, we are nine countries, as I mentioned, uh, to have a new framework for cultural statistics uh, useful for the cultural policies within the European Union countries and uh, uh, in particular on the on this domain that I mentioned, festivals. So um, I'm answering to your question. The data is from structural business statistics and the whole countries in European Union through Eurostat can receive such data, in particular economic indicators that I mentioned. Fantastic. And a very basic practical question. How is your work here funded? Um, you mean the Observatory of Culture Economics? Mm. 
from time to time we have a project uh, with the relations with the Sofia municipality. I mentioned the uh, uh, European Union um, project that we are participating in. Uh, the financing is from the uh, program Horizon 2020. Yeah. We are nine countries and uh, we succeeded with the highest budget for, uh, such, a pro for such a scientific project. Uh, we have also a, a voluntary part uh, with the civil activism uh, because uh, from time to time in Bulgarian cultural policy, we are participating with the civil activism, with the declaration, public debates. We are also organizing pre-election debates with Bulgarian politicians to insist to read this data, for example, uh, to promise some um, uh, very important part of the cultural policies uh, before the elections. And uh, uh, for these uh, particular activities, we do not have funding because if you're funded by an institution or even state, you're depending uh, from the uh, foreign uh, willing, I, I could say. So we would like for this uh, part of our civil activism to be completely independent. And we are not receiving money for the public debates, for the conferences that we are organizing, or as I mentioned, civil activism. Amazing. It hadn't occurred to me that you might be part of the civil activist political structure in that way. Um, thinking about politics, Robert, would you like to ask your question? Because I think that's very pertinent here. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. It's extremely interesting. Uh, my question was about the uh, difference between the rest of Bulgaria and Sofia. Um, uh, what is your stance in this difference? Do you think it's actually productive to have it all centered, a whole film industry in one city, so you can create a, a social and material infrastructure which actually uh, produces this film industry? Or do you think it would be more productive to spread it across Bulgaria? And if so, um, how do you suggest to spread this as productively as possible? Uh, I mentioned that we don't have a national policy uh, insisting to have this regional development, uh, decentralization and deconcentration. Uh, one of the points uh, which is difficult uh, for the cultural activities uh, out of Sofia is that we don't have a clear fiscal decentralization for the municipalities out of Sofia. And that's why we have here uh, in Sofia concentration of the added value or uh, foreign direct investments like 80-90%. Uh, this is a huge problem for the uh, rest of the regions, not uh, just the municipalities, uh, this uh, problematic fiscal decentralization, because the national budget um, uh, distributed uh, delegated transfers to Bulgarian municipalities. Uh, they cannot have their own uh, taxes and spreading to uh, cultural activities in this uh, case. I mentioned that in Bulgarian constitution, we have a special article about the balanced development of Bulgaria, but none of the previous governments uh, stay strictly to this article of Bulgarian constitution. That's why we have uh, such a huge concentration in Sofia. I think one of the uh, decision in this way is to move uh, especially European resources uh, and uh, now the new funding that we are expecting uh, with the plan for sustainable development uh, of European Union to move the resources out of Sofia in particular, uh, to build a national strategy and to make a, a first priority access to culture on a regional level and to make a regional development uh, priority of this uh, in this national strategy. Thank you. It's complex, but I can see the direction that you're moving. Corinne, would you like to ask your question? And I think it's both to uh, Diana and Biliana and Maria in actual fact. 
Yes, thank you. Yes, sorry, my question was cut into two because I pressed enter too much. Now, I, I don't know if I, I remember or understood correctly, but I thought you said that there was um, uh, arts and culture increases in value nine times more than it actually cost us in funding. Um, and I find it very interesting because I feel like we always have to justify um, spending money. And if there are cuts, it's most arts and culture is always on, on top of the list to make uh, to make some some cuts. And I was wondering if you see that too in, in Bulgaria, maybe Sofia, and what you say to people who uh, address this issue, because I feel like we are trying to to also bring across this message you, you bring to us, but never seem to really get through. So I was just wondering if you maybe reflect on that. And maybe indeed it's also a question for Sophie and team. Biliana, would you like to answer or just me? Um, Maybe better you. <laughs> um, in this case of the nine time uh, um, economical growth, not just but added value uh, growth in comparison with the public subsidies, that's why we are using this economical uh, research to prove the importance of the public money as the first investment that we need for the sector. And uh, in particular years in uh, the national budget, we have uh, drastic cuts uh, in the public uh, money, uh, for example. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, I'm also civil activist with this research and uh, we are insisting with many declarations and open letters to the uh, Minister of Finance, to the Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Culture and to the Parliament uh, to preserve the public uh, money uh, for the sector because the value, the added value is uh, uh, several times bigger than the public uh, subsidy. We have a problem with the Bulgarian politicians that uh, from time to time I mentioned uh, already, they're not reading uh, researches and analyses uh, and uh, this is lack of information and uh, informed decisions, uh, especially within the Bulgarian legislation. Thank you. Biliana, Maria, Doncho, did you want to add anything here to the importance of this, to your ability to do your work? Just big smiles. In fact, I think that in... Um... In the municipality, the, the decision makers uh, use the data that uh, that is um, um, from the analysis and from the work of um, people like uh, uh, Diana, because um, we really um, uh, we really um, made our um, strategies. Um, upon the analysis and upon the research and uh, upon survey service uh, uh, through the sector. So, of course, um, maybe not completely, of course, not completely. Uh, I wish uh, to be uh, more, um, how to say, um, to work more close with uh, with um, with the scientists, with uh, with uh, people like like Diana. But it's been a lovely balance across these three days of um, the colours and numbers that we've talked about since the Amsterdam meeting. The two ways that we show other people the value of what we're doing um, to have this presentation alongside the presentations from the artists with perhaps the cinema program in the middle. It's been fantastic. Um, Diana, thank you so very, very much for this beautiful presentation. Um, are we able to have a copy to circulate amongst ourselves? Yes, of course, I will uh, send to Biliana and uh, she could share it to you, our, uh, my presentation. Lovely. And I would like to also thank you for the invitation to participate in uh, your project and I wish you success with the activities in the project and uh, the next possible meeting uh, could be in presence, uh, let's say, oh, out yes, of please. COVID crisis. So yes, I wish you good luck with the project and one more time, thank you for your invitation.
Oh, thank you, Diana. Thank you.